So this is the color block project. And for this project, um, before you start editing, you want to make sure that you have a good amount of photos to use for this project that either focuses on one color or one color scheme. So I have my photos here. I renamed the ones that I really liked after what kind of color scheme they have or what colors are in it. So I have a few photos that have red and green together. So those are all a red green complementary color scheme, but I didn't have a whole lot of those. What I did end up taking a lot of photos of was a lot of different types of plants and different objects that have yellow and green together, which is an analogous color scheme. So those are the photos I'm primarily going to focus on. And I need to put them together into a Photoshop document. So what I'm gonna do is when I have Photoshop open here, I'm gonna go to File and New. So to open photos individually, you can open under File, but we wanna make a new Photoshop document to put all those photos on. So we're gonna to go to New. And it sometimes defaults to pixels, but we want inches. And we want to make sure the resolution is 300. The actual dimensions, the width and height of your document can be whatever will work for your photos. If you're using a grid of nine square photos, you could do nine inches by nine inches and each one could be an inch square. Um, but a good place to start is an 8 by 10 and you can always change the size later. So an 8 by 10 is a vertical orientation. You could do a horizontal which is 10 by 8 but you can click on these little things here and that will change what the orientation is. I'm going to go with a horizontal rectangle so that'll be 10 by 8. I have my resolution at 300 pixels per inch and I have it set to inches. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. That's going to give me my document here. That's an eight by 10. And then I can start putting my photos onto this document. So one way of doing that is to go to File, Open, and open up your photos so they have all these different tabs here. Another way is if you have Finder or File Explorer on a Windows computer, if you have that open, you can select the photos that you want. So let's see, I have 12 here. I'll probably narrow it down to nine, but I'm going to open all these. So I'm gonna highlight these, drag them over to this tab area here, and that will open them as individual tabs in Photoshop. It'll take a minute. All right, and then if I go over to my other document here, let's see. I go to my untitled document, I can now add these photos on here. You can technically drag the photos from Finder or File Explorer straight onto um, the document here, but if you do that, sometimes it will create a smart object um, with the layers and it won't let you delete different sections of the photo if you want to do that later on. So I would suggest going to your individual photos. So let's say I want this photo selecting all of it, so Command or Control A, or you can go up to Select and All. And then I want to copy this and paste it onto my document. So I can do Command or Control C or Edit, Copy. And then I can go over to my untitled document and I can paste it, so Command or Control V or Edit, Paste. So what I'm noticing about my image here is it pasted it really large. This is only showing me part of the image because it's put it in at a really large resolution. So I can go to the move tool and move things around until I find the corner of my photo. And then to resize it, I want to transform it. So the shortcut for that is command or control T, or you can go up to edit 
and free transform. And that will let you resize it. If you go to the very corner where there's the double arrow, that will let you resize the image. If you go a little farther, it gives you that curved arrow. That is to rotate the image, and we won't really need that for this project. You want to make sure that it's on the straight double arrow. I'm going to make that a little smaller. And when you're done resizing it, you can either push enter or the checkbox here. And so I need to kind of plan out where all my photos are going to go on this. So I have my rulers open here so I can put in some guides. Um, if your rulers aren't showing up, you can go to view and rulers. And that brings up these rulers here. Sometimes Photoshop likes to default to pixels on the rulers as well. And it will put it in increments of 500. And so it's really hard to put in precise guides on increments of 500. So in order to set it to inches, you can go up to the Photoshop tab here, go to preferences, and then units and rulers. And when you go to that, it opens this little window here. And the one thing we want to change is if it's set to pixels on the rulers here, we want to change that to inches. So just change that to inches under rulers, click OK, and now they are inches. So with my rulers here, I can kind of plan out where I want my photos. So we want to have at least nine photos for this. You can have more if you want. So you, the dimensions of your document and what size spaces you're going to have for each photo is just going to depend on um, how many photos you have and whether you want them to be rectangular or square. So I could keep this as a rectangular photo, but I have a lot that are vertical and a lot that are horizontal, and I want them to all look like they go together, so I'm going to make them squares. And I could crop this ahead of time into a square and bring it in, but I'm going to kind of plan this out a little bit and do it a little bit of a different way. So if I'm putting in nine photos here, I have a 8 by 10 I'll probably want to change that to a 9 by 9 and then have each photo a 1 inch square. So if you decide that your canvas needs to change in size after you've already created it, you can go up to Image and you can go to Canvas Size. And that will allow you to change the image size. You can make it smaller, bigger, you can make it bigger on one side, smaller on the other. Um, you just type in the dimensions that you want. So let's say I want a nine by nine. And so what that does is it shows me the arrows of where it's going to scrunch in the, the overall canvas and where it's going to expand the canvas. So if I was just going from an eight by 10 Let's say I wanted to make it a 10 by 10 instead of an 8 by 10. Then it would show me all these arrows are expanding. You can decide where you want it to expand from. So right now when the dot is in the middle, that's expanding from all sides. If I put it up at the top, that means it's going to expand downward and add more space down at the bottom of the canvas. I could click down here and it will do the opposite and it will expand at the top. It's the same thing if it's getting smaller, but I'm going to make it a nine by nine. So that is going to get bigger in some spots, smaller in others. And so I can decide where that's going to expand, where it's going to shrink. So if I did it right here in the middle and it's shrinking in from the sides, it's gonna crop off this image a little bit. I can always bring it in since it's another layer, but that's just something to keep in mind with these arrows. So let's say, I want it to scrunch it on the sides and expand upward. I can click it down there. Opposite with the top, if I want it to scrunch in on the sides and expand downward, I can put the dot up there. But I'm just gonna stick it in the middle. The canvas will scrunch in on the sides and I can move this image on this layer. So I'm gonna make it a nine by nine, it's inches. I'm just gonna click okay. Says some clipping's going to occur, and that's fine. I can just move this layer inward. So now I have a nine by nine. So what I can do with my guides is I can go in and 
let's say we are going to have a three by three grid. So I'm going to make each photo three inches. So I put a guide at three inches, six inches, and there's the edge that's nine. So I'm going to move that kind of out of the way for now. I'm going to do the same with the top. Three, six, and then nine on the bottom. So now I have a three by three grid that are squares and I can fit my photos into them and trim them down to fit that square format. So I wanna change this size again. So I'm gonna go Command T or Control T if you're on a Windows computer. And I'm gonna resize this so that it is the right width for this square here. So I'm gonna make it about that push enter to confirm that. I can still move it around with my move tool up here, but I wanna select the area that I want within these guides for this middle square here. So I'm gonna put it, I think right about there, and it fits on the either side here, but we have some extra on the top and the bottom. And so what we can do with that is if I go to the rectangular marquee tool, I can select this area that's above here that's extra, and I can just push delete on the keyboard. I can do the same thing with the bottom here. Or if you have more on one side or the other, you can do the same. Then when I'm done with this selection, I can just go Command or Control D to deselect. You can get to that under Select up at the top as well and click Deselect. And now I can add some more photos. So let's see, I finished with that photo, so I'm gonna close that and get that out of the way. Let's see, what other photos do I wanna use? Let's say I wanna add this one as well, so Command A to select everything, Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste. And again, it's really big. I'm gonna to go to the Move tool, move it so I can see the corner, Command or Control T to transform. Make that a little smaller. And you know, I really like the yellows and the greens in this one, so I might actually want this one in the middle. So I can make this the right size for one of the squares. And then I can decide, I want this one, you know, actually I want that one up here. So I can just move that one up there and I move this here. I really like this center area here. So I want that somewhere near the middle. Looks like I have a little extra on this side. That's fine, I can trim that. And so that's about how I want it positioned. I'm gonna go back to that rectangular marquee tool, select this area up here. And it's okay that I'm going over this layer here because I have the layer selected just for this middle image. And so it's not going to do anything to this other layer that isn't selected. So I have this area selected here. I'm gonna click delete, do the same thing on the bottom. Oops. And that little bit on the side. And then Command D to deselect. And now I can go in and continue with my other photos. So let's see, we did that one. Most of mine are plants, or in the case of a couple of these, fake plants. Um, you don't necessarily have to stick with that kind of theme. You can have all sorts of different things that have your color scheme or your color that you've chosen. Um, I just chose kind of plants as a theme because I found a lot of yellows and greens happening together in plants. Um, but you can have any combination of different types of things that are your color or color scheme. I'm going to transform this again, Command or Control T, resize this. And you can keep them with rectangles. I just have some that are horizontal, some that are vertical, and I want them to look consistent. If you are not having your images be squares, then 
You don't have to have your canvas be a square. You can have them a rectangle if your images are rectangles. Let's see, I don't want this one up here. I want to make sure it goes right up to the edge there. But your dimensions of your canvas and the, the size of everything is going to just depend on the size of your images, whether you want them squares or rectangles, and how you want them positioned. But we want to be creating a grid, even if they're rectangular. So let's see. I'll add this one, I think. Nope, I like this one better. So Command A to select everything, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, Move Tool, Command T to transform. And it does help to have it on the Move Tool while you're transforming so you can move things around and then transform it some more. Let's see, I have a flower up here. I think I'm gonna put a flower down here to kind of even it out. So you wanna think about kind of where different things are placed, depending on what they are. They're all gonna have the same color or color scheme, but I kinda of wanna balance things out with the flower up here, a flower down there. And you might have some similar objects or things in your photos like that, or you may not. Um, either way is totally fine. Let's see, I'm going to close that one. That one's very similar to my other one. I already have some daffodils. That daffodil I already have. Let's see what else I have. So I have some grass here that has some yellow in it and some green. I'm going to Command A to select everything, Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste. Command T to transform. And you can always put in your images and then decide later that you want to move them around. Sometimes it might help to just get them to be squares or placed where you, you think you want them. Just look at the overall composition of everything and then move them around. So with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm selecting that area, pushing delete, command D to deselect. Mm how many flowers I want so I might not do the pansy but we'll see let's see I really like this foliage so command A command C command V command T Rectangular marquee tool, delete, command D to deselect. I'm just going to put it back on the move tool for my next step when I have the other photo in there. Let's put some holly in there. It has a bit of a darker green to it. Command A, command C, command B. Command T. Let's see, I have some dark green up here, and so maybe I'll even that out and put some dark green down here in the opposite corner. And if it goes off the canvas, that kind of automatically crops it, so you don't have to worry too much about that. All right, so I just need to fill in two more spots. I'm liking how things are balanced as far as the different values of my color scheme. So 
I don't need that anymore. Let's take a look at what I have. You know, I have this image here of the same plant, but kind of zoomed out and with some snow, so I think I'm going to use that as well. I'm going to paste it in here, go to my move tool, transform. And since I have that similar plant over here, I'm going to put this one over here. So the bigger leaves. I'll do that. And then I can select this area here, delete that. Select this area here, delete that, deselect. Now I need one more photo. Let's see, they're both flowers. Could have another flower down there. Let's go with the pansy. So command A, command C, command V, move tool, command T. Remember, every time I say command, if you're using a Windows computer, you'll want to use um, the control button. But on a Mac, that would be control or command, sorry. So I want a little bit more of that green, so I might actually crop the top of that pansy there. And my key tool, select, delete. Select, delete, and then Command D to deselect. That's looking pretty good. So now to get an idea of what it looks like, I'm going to go up to View and Clear Guides. And now I can take a look at what that's looking like. Looks like I have a little bit of extra space on these and not quite lined up, so I can click on this one, maybe shift that over a little bit. Maybe this one actually needs to be shifted over. That one a little bit. Looks looking pretty good. It looks like this one goes over the line. This one needs to go up a little bit. Maybe this one needs to be a little bit. You want to make sure that your guides are pretty spot on to begin with so that you don't have to adjust too much. Let me see, let me put the guide back in here. Actually a little further over. There we go. Now I'm going to clear my guides again. That's a little better. Now as I look at the whole thing, I have my grid. Each one's its own layer, so I'm going to go ahead and save this as a Photoshop document. So I can click Save As under File. Save on my computer, and I'm going to call this Cup Color Block. I am going to save it as a Photoshop document so I can save all those layers in case I want to make any changes later. So I'm going to go back into the folder I got it from. I guess it should, but double check. It wants to put it into my strips folder for that project, but I want it to go into my Color Block project folder. So I'm going to expand this. I'm going to go to my documents, my photography 2 folder, color block. There we go. So now that will save it into that folder. I'm going to click save, OK, and then that will be saved as a Photoshop document for future use. But then to turn into Schoology, we want to make sure that that is a smaller file. So we're going to go save File, save as again, save on your computer, 
Same thing, but we're just gonna change it to a JPEG. And save, and okay. So now I have it saved as a JPEG as well. If I go back to Finder or File Explorer, or whatever you're using on your computer to find your photos, I should have color block as a Photoshop file, color block as a JPEG. So now I can turn in this color block project. So that is the color block. You want to make sure you have at least nine photos, but you can always have more. So if you have more, you want to change the dimensions of your document to accommodate that or make your photos smaller. They can be rectangular or they can be square, but they have to be into some sort of grid.